We are used to the words of institution. The night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took the cup, and after he blessed it. We call it the cup of blessing, and it is. Not only is it a great blessing, but that is its name. But that's not all that it is. When things are in proper order, we can go on thinking that blessing is all that is there. But Paul reminds us that if it is taken in an unworthy manner, you may get sick or even die. How can this be? How can a blessing be lethal? There was another cup that great and terrible night. Jesus prays, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. The cup that Jesus needed to drink from was the cup of God's wrath. For in the hand of the Lord there is a cup with foaming wine, well mixed, and he pours it out from it, and all the wicked of the earth shall drain it down to the dregs. And again, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, he said to me, take from my hand this cup of wine of wrath and make all the nations to whom I send you drink it. But what about the bread? Maybe we'll just keep the wine to those that we know are holy. Nope, the bread too. It is the bread of death in the dream Gideon overhears. It is the chief breaker's head in Egypt. Instead of the bread making them the body of Christ, they become the feast of flesh for the birds of the air. This is the way it always is. Blessings and curses, life or death. It is a fearful thing to fall in the hands of the living God. I gave them eternal life and no one will be able to snatch them out of my hand. You do not escape the wrath and curses of God by knowing enough or being able to describe a certain doctrine. You receive the blessings and not cursings because in your baptism you died with Christ. The wrath from the Father fell on him for your sakes and now all that is left for you is eternal life as partakers of the divine nature. So come and welcome to Jesus Christ. <laughs> 